So it occurred to me that it might actually be beneficial to talk about kind of where I'm at in terms of uh, safety. So this uh, this slide deck or this presentation kind of comes uh, after several conversations that I've had with various people. You might have seen that I've uh, been on several podcasts. I've got a few more that I'm uh, appearing on as a guest. And as always, by having conversations with other people and thinkers in this space, um, that has helped me crystallize kind of my position. And really, like the question is, okay, safety versus acceleration, open source versus closed source. And really, I mean, the TLDR is optimized for research. I don't really, I'm not going to say I don't care. Like it's not that blasé, but like the primary thing that I want to optimize for on a numerical level is optimizing for research. So let's, let's dig into this and I'll tell you exactly what I mean. So, you know, we could talk about open source versus closed source. There's lots and lots of arguments on either side as to um, safety, control. Uh, you know, for instance, with closed source uh, AI, you can hold the companies responsible. If they do harm, you shut the company down, you, uh, you sanction them or whatever. Open source, once it's out in the wild, there's not much you can do, but researchers can get a hold of it. And so having worked with uh, researchers in the academic space, open source AI is actually really critical for all research. Um, and another thing to keep in mind is a lot of the benefits that closed source AI has actually came from open source research. It comes from MIT and Stanford um, and so on and so forth. And there is a huge interplay between closed source and open source. So you basically have to have both. You can't have either or. And even if you wanted to, so this was, this was kind of a thought experiment I did on a, on a podcast that I was a guest on. Even if you had a magic button where you can say it's all open source or all, all closed source, you wouldn't want to hit that button because you actually do need both. And there's a lots of strengths and weaknesses to both. And, and kind of the place where I'm at is I don't know which direction it should go or if it should change at all. Perhaps the current balance of open versus closed is the optimal or close to optimal uh, uh, kind of policy or paradigm uh, ratio between open and closed source. So uh, as mentioned, there are plenty of advantages to closed source uh, you know, from hold, you know, courts holding companies accountable to the market holding companies accountable. So for instance, if, you know, and, and a lot of people have put this in the messages or the comments section lately, like if an AI company, if you don't like what they're doing, you cancel your subscription, you vote with your dollars. Now, obviously that doesn't shut them down, but it does send a signal to them saying, hey, I don't like what you're doing. Um, and then who you choose to give your money to. So for instance, I subscribe to Perplexity and Anthropic and OpenAI. That's a signal to them saying, hey, I appreciate what you're doing. I also have WiseCut AI and um, MidJourney. So again, you know, I have a bunch of AI subscriptions, but that is a market signal that's saying, hey, um, me as a person, my I'm, I'm giving you a signal of not just value, but moral alignment. Um, by by virtue of giving you money. Now, then, of course, there's regulatory oversight and regulatory capture is a huge, huge, huge risk. Um, we've been talking about quite extensively with the EU AI Act, the upcoming um, American reg uh, le regulation. I tried to say regulation and legislation at the same time. Doesn't work. Um, anyways, you get the idea. The, uh, like That accountability and the financial incentives are there. But, of course, when there's financial incentives, there can also be perverse incentives because then you're locked in a race dynamic and so on and so forth. So there's pros and cons to closed source, just as the same that there's pros and cons to open source. And so um, the primary thing, oh, and by the way, the reason that I have this is just because this is what MidJourney thinks the typical GitHub user looks like. Um, and there was once upon a time that this looked more like me, but you know, the hair anyways, sorry. Uh, so open source, again, open source is absolutely critical for research. Um, you know, whether it is, uh, researchers doing ablation tests on, you know, llama and that sort of stuff, um, that helps everyone. And so this is, this is why I really particularly appreciate the ethos of meta and, uh, Less so Google today, but Google really started all this with all their open source research into deep learning and transformer architecture, because by by making those tools available to universities, to other companies, um, that really greatly amplifies the amount of research that can be done. Um, because guess what? A lot of university departments, they don't necessarily have the funding um, to spend tens of thousands of dollars on inference costs or uh, flagship models from Amazon and Microsoft. Now, that being said, 
Uh, Microsoft has their own internal research division. Amazon has their own internal research division. And most of these companies also hand out gigantic grants to researchers. I have people in my community and and local friends who have $10,000 of credit, um, uh, of like inference credits on Amazon. Um, I think one actually had, had a grant up to 100,000 uh, like tokens or whatever, uh, like dollars worth of credit tokens. I'm not sure exactly how it works. But my point is, is that um, even there, again, there is a balance between open and closed source. And even the big shops, even the big tech um, and big iron ones, a lot of them are still participating in open source uh, research. So, you know, again, it's not, it's not an either or, it's a both. You absolutely need both. And so this is, I guess the reason that I'm making this video is because I'm really tired of hearing this debate. Um, like it's, we need to stop oversimplifying it. Now, one thing that I will also say is that there are huge incentives um, that are required for this investment. You know, Amazon, Microsoft, a bunch of others, they're talking about investing up to $100 billion in AI um, infrastructure and research. Like, that is incredible. And, you know, yes, that is accelerationist because, you know, as I always say, and I continuously say, where money goes, results follow. And so, you know, you, you think that Project Stargate, you know, Microsoft with a $100 billion uh, AI data center in the desert, that's going to yield results. Amazon, Elon Musk, all of these guys that are, that are, that are dumping money into this, all the investors um, that are flocking to it, and all the, uh, all the uh, tangential, all the downstream um, uh, things like building more chip fabs, building more power infrastructure, uh, building more data infrastructure, all of these things are going to have huge knock-on effects. Um, I think Elon Musk was just cited as saying, like, people should get into lithium, um, not financial advice, not investing advice. I don't even know if he said it, but uh, you know, it was attributed to him. So he's like, guys, we need more of these resources. And so this is, again, why you absolutely need closed source. You need to protect intellectual property rights in order to incentivize investment of this level. That is on the accelerationist side. Now, what's on the safety side? So the safety side I'll get to in, in just a second, but but again, what I want to point out is even with you know billions and billions of dollars on the line, a lot of these people are still contributing to open source. Elon Musk open sourced Grok. It's not and Grok One. It's not a, an impressive model, but that is now another tool in the toolbox that all researchers around the entire world can use. And so, really, my policy is whatever we do. Uh, whether it is academic or business or economic or political or whatever, we should optimize for a total amount of research being done. And the reason that I say this is because the way that I see it is in order to get what everyone wants, because we want, we want safe, we, you know, we, we all want to be safe. We don't want to, um, you know, nuke ourselves out of existence. We don't want nuclear war. We don't want, you know, AI machine uprising, you know, so on and so forth. But we also want the benefits, right? We want the carrot. We want that shining beacon on the hill of the utopian future that is powered by artificial intelligence and so on and so forth. We want both. And so if you optimize for research, research is what underpins both of those. So another way to think of it is, you know, it requires a certain amount of uh, research points to get to the safe ending. It also requires a certain amount of uh, research points to get to the utopian ending. So what we need, what those have in common is more research. And so whatever policy is, um, whether you know you're a mid-level manager or an executive at a big tech company or a, a research department, um, you know at you know Stanford or Clemson or wherever, whatever decisions we make, we should be optimizing for research. And I kind of think we already are. So again, this is why this is this, I haven't really made any videos or talking about this because personally, I feel like it's a total non-issue. There's plenty of open source research. There's plenty of closed source research. There's plenty of funding. The research is happening and lots of people are doing the safety research. I don't think we really need to manipulate the system anymore. And in fact, uh, you know, stacking the deck or manipulating the system could have adverse effects, um, could incentivize uh, things that we don't want to see from here. So one analogy that I like to use is you know, grand strategy games. So you know, StarCraft is not necessarily grand strategy, but you know, like Rome Total War, Stellaris, and those other things, where you get to build research bases. So one, one way that I like to play grand strategy games is you build as much research as you can. And the reason is because then that gets you to accelerate down your tech tree faster. And so then if you're the most advanced player on the board, you win by default. And so that's kind of my, uh, my, my thing. And of course, 
in the grand strategy game on planet Earth, it's basically like America versus China. And guess what? That's what both of these nations are doing. But at the same time, I think that if we come to a common understanding and a shared understanding of how to navigate um, all the uh, economic incentives, all the technological incentives, the nature of AI, the nature of what we're building, if we all get to a high enough research level, you know, get to we're at, let's say we're at tier three right now and we need to get to tier six in order to get the utopian safe, you know, post-scarcity, uh, post-labor uh, ending. Well, it behooves all of us to work together to get there. And so, again, optimize for research. That's my primary policy. Whatever else gets there, because more research is better. And so the way that, I, the way that I'm starting to characterize this is it's a win-win. We can get there safe, and we can get there fast. It's not an either-or. And um, what, what, what some people help me understand is that for those that pitch it as an either or, it is either safe or it is acceleration. It is either safe or fast or you know open or closed. It's it's not. It was that that is a false choice. That is a false dichotomy. That was never really the true option. Yes, if you look at Twitter, if you look at Reddit, it is, but like that's just not the way the world works. That's not the way that the governments work. That's not the way that corporations work. That's not the way that universities work. It is always a little bit of both. And so really, like, we're looking for the win-win, and the win-win here is just more research. Optimize for research. Um, you know, the number of man hours per year um, looking at AI. And that's a big reason why I do what I do. I've had dozens, if not hundreds, of people message me over the last few months, over the last couple of years, um, saying, hey, like, you inspired me to get into AI research, whether it's deployment, safety, alignment, whatever. And so, yeah, like, let's optimize for that because, again, the more research is being done, the more economic growth we have, the faster we solve, you know, problems like, you know, disease, aging, the sooner we solve climate change, more research is better. More research is better. Just keep optimizing for research. So thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this. Nice short uh, video for the day. Um, cheers. Have a good one.